Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom and welcome back to today's Daf Yomi Shabbos Daf Chav Gimel, or 12 lines from the top, says the Yomar. Om Rav Sheshis, Ach Sinoi, Chayiv B'ner Chanukah. Even if somebody is a guest in someone else's home, he is Chayiv in their Chanukah. Because although the mitzvah of their Chanukah is to place it, near the doorway of one's home. Nevertheless, even if one is not present in his own home, he's merely a guest, he's an achsenoi, he's still chayv in Hanukkah. Says the Ran, because don't think it's like the mitzvah of mezuzah that requires a bias. If one is merely a guest in somebody else's home, he's not chayv in mitzvah mezuzah. Ner Hanukkah is different. Ner Hanukkah is a personal obligation. It's a chiv gavra. Therefore, even an achsenoi, a guest, in someone else's home is chayiv in their Hanukkah. Om Rav Zeyre Meiresh initially when I attended the yeshiva and I was away from home, I would contribute some coins and uh, I, would, I would partner with my host, with my host, and by doing so I fulfilled my chayiv, my obligation of their Hanukkah. I had a chalik in his their Hanukkah. Bossa the Nesivi Itza, however, after I married and I attended Yeshiva away from home, I mean, I said, Hashta Vadal now I certainly don't need to be Mishtata Vipriti, I don't, don't need to partner, become a Shutaf with the host. Why? Because the Komad Liki, a lie, because they, they light the Ner on my behalf, the Komad Liki, a lie, on my behalf, because my wife does it in my home, on my behalf as well. Therefore, I'm Zyoitse, on account of her Hadlaka. Continues the Gemara, Amr of Shomen Levi. Kalashmanim Kulan, all types of oils, Yofel and Air, are good for, for an air. They produce a nice flame. Vishem and Zayis, olive oil, Mina Mufkar. That's the best. Amr by Me Reish, initially, have a Mahadar Mar, my Rebbe Rabbah, he would pursue a Mishcha de Shumshmit. He would look to use the oil. Of, of sesame oil. And Rashi Tesis explains that we're speaking about for the nearest Hanukkah. So that was his preference. Mishcha de Sumsvi. Omar, he said, why do I prefer this type of oil? Omar, hai moshech it lasts longer. However, given the Shoma Laha, once he heard, given the Shoma Laha, the Shoma Levi, that Shaman Zayas is preferred, Mahadar Mishcha de Zaysa. From now on, he pursued, he preferred olive oil, and he said, Omar The flame of the olive oil is more, is more bright, it's clearer, and therefore it is preferred. All types of oil are suitable to be used in the process of making ink. Olive oil is the best. Ash explains that the process of, of making ink was as follows. They used to take a clay schuches, some type of glass, and they would uh, smoke it up with uh, oil smoke until it blackens. And then they would scrape off this black residue and uh, put in, add some more oil into this and uh, mix it up. And they would use it as an ingredient in the ink, ink making process. So first they would make ashen, they used to use the oil smoke onto, they put it onto the uh, clay schuches. And then when they took off the residue, is to add oil while they will be magavel, while they mixed this black residue. So Shuman Levi tells us, all types of oils are suitable for this process, but Shaman Zayis is the best. Iboilu says the more they ask the question. What does he mean when he says Shaman Zayis Miramufkar? Which part of the, of the process? Legavel, when they mixed it? Or Ashen? Or to use the smoke of olive oil to smoke up the, the um, glass? So was it in the first phase of the process or was it when they mixed it in the second phase of the process and they added the oil? In that case, olive oil is preferred. So the more Tashma, the Tony of Shmuel Razutra, call Shmonam Yafun all types of oils are suitable for the ink making process of Shem and Zayis, Mamufka Shem Zayis is the best, Bein Le Gavel, Bein Le Ashen, whether to be used for smoking up the glass and also to add in the Gibel when they mixed up this ingredient. Continues the Gemara of Shmuel Bar Zutra Mas Nihachi. He knows as follows: Kol Hashanim Yafun Lejoy. 
all types of smoke are good for ink, meaning all types of oil smoke are good. And the smoke of olive oil is the best. You often do this to add another ingredient called sraf, some sort of sap. So all types of saps are, are good, are beneficial for the ink making process. Sraf, ketaf, the sap of this ketaf, this was uh, something used in the uh, keturus making process as well. We learned that um, we use the shemen hanoitif me'atzi aktaf. So this, this type of sap was yafemikum, was the best sap of all of them to be used in the ink making process. So in summary, the Gemara taught us regarding the chiv of an achsinoi, a guest. He's meant to be meshtatev bepruta, to contribute and to take part in and partner in the host in Hanukkah, if he can't have his own Hanukkah. And as the Gemara told us, that Rav Zera, well, once he married, he didn't add, he didn't, he didn't partner with the host in Hanukkah because he said, my wife lights in Hanukkah in my home on my behalf. The Gemara tells us that Shemen Zayis, olive oil, is the most preferred type of oil to be used for the Ner of Shabbos, the Ner of Hanukkah, since the, the flame of olive oil is bright. It is Tzolil Nohire Tfei. Continues the Gemara. Omar Avchi Bar Asham Arav. What about the brachis of Ner Hanukkah? Hamadik Ner Hanukkah Tzorch Levarach. A brach is recited when one lights Ner Hanukkah. We have Yirmi Amar, not only if one lights, but even if one merely sees, has a sighting of Ner Hanukkah, Haroya Ner Hanukkah, Tzorch Levarach. Rashi explains, speaking about one who has not yet lit his own Ner Hanukkah, or Rashi says, Liyashid Bisfina, one who's sitting in a, living in a, uh, in a, in a ship, and he doesn't have the opportunity to light Ner Hanukkah. So, he must make a bracha when he sees a Ner Hanukkah. The other Rishayim say, the, the Ran and Mordechai point out that this bracha of Roya only pertains to one who has not yet lit and doesn't intend to light a Ner Hanukkah. But otherwise, if he's going to light his Ner Hanukkah, he certainly doesn't make a bracha upon seeing somebody else's Ner Hanukkah. So once again, one who's madlik makes a bracha. One who's roya also makes a bracha. Says the Gemara, okay, so we know they make brachas. How many brachas do they make? Amar of Yudah. Yom Rishon, on the first day of Hanukkah, haroya mevaruch beis. The roya makes two brachas. Umadlik mevaruch gimel. The one who actually lights the menorah, he makes three brachas because the roya will not make the bracha of hashakir tzadam mevitzvay tzavitzvan al lahadik neshal Hanukkah. He's not actually lighting it. So he omits that bracha and it leaves him only with two brachas. The madlik includes that bracha as well for a total of three. So that's on the first day. Mikan ve'elach. But after the first day, from the second day and on, we omit one, we deduct one of those brachas. If so, madlik mevarach shtayim. The one who lights is left with two brachas. Ve'royim mevarach achas. But the royim only has one bracha. So on the first day, the Madak makes three brachas, Lahadak Neshal Hanukkah. He makes the bracha of Shasanis and Lavisenu. He makes the bracha of Shechiyanu. The Roya omits Lahadak Neshal Hanukkah and he only makes Shasanis and Shechiyanu. However, after the first day of Hanukkah, they deduct one more bracha. And that leaves the Madak with two and the Roya with one. So says more, Maimamait, which one of those brachas do they omit? Starting from the second day of Hanukkah onward. Says the Gemara, Ma'it Zman, they omit the bracha of Shechiyon, of Ikimon, of Igyon, of Zman Azeh. Why? Why is that the one chosen to be omitted? Venimait Znais. Why don't they omit the bracha of Shasin Yisna Veseinu instead of Zman? Says the Gemara, Nais, Kol Yoimi Isi. The miracle that carried on throughout the entire Hanukkah. The oil that they lit in the base of Migdash. It lasted throughout all the eight days, and therefore the nais was uh, the nais took place throughout all the days of Hanukkah, and the bracha of Shasanis and Lavisenu on account of the nais is applicable throughout all the days. However, the bracha of Zman, the bracha of Shechiyon, of Vikimon, of Yon, La Zman Azeh, explains Rashi, is referring to the beginning, the onset, the commencement of the Zman Azeh, 
We thank Hashem for allowing us to arrive to the beginning of this period of the eight day Hanukkah period and therefore only on the first day when we arrive at that Zman we make the bracha. But starting from the second day onward we omit the bracha of Zman. Okay, says the Gemara, So what exactly is the Nusach of the bracha? Says the Gemara, Okay, so that's the first bracha on account of the lighting on the Maisa Hadlaka. Says the Gemara, Hashem, you have commanded us to light near Hanukkah. It's not a mitzvah de Raisa, it's merely a mitzvah de Rabbanon. Where did Hashem command us? What do we find in the Torah? A, a basis, a source for near Hanukkah. Says the Gemara, Tutu Rutz, Rav Avi Amar, Beloy Sasser. The Pasuk says, Loy Sasser, Min Adover, Ashia Gidlocha Yimina Smoil, and Torah is telling us we're not meant to stray from the directives of the Chachamim. So this is the basis of all the mitzvahs to Rabbanon, all the obligations that the Chachamim enacted, and therefore it is suitable to make the bracha of Hashem Kishonim, which says, Vitzi Vanu. Hashem, you have commanded us to listen to the Chachamim, who established this mitzvah in Erechanak. Ibn Chem Yomar from a different Pasuk. Sha'ala b'yichav yagayt, ask your father, and he will tell you, the elders, and they will direct you. So this is a rem as a source, for the mitzvahs to Rabbonon, and certainly the, the term Vitzivanu is applicable even regarding mitzvahs to Rabbonon. So in summary, how many brachis are recited by Hadlachas Ner Hanukkah? We have three brachis. Number one, Asher Kichonu Mitzvahis Vitzvanu, Lahadik Ner Hanukkah. Why do we say Vitzivanu Hashem? You have commanded us. Because we have two sources in the Torah that the mitzvahs to Rabbonon are based on those psukim. It's either a Saser. Hashem tells us, don't stray from the words of the Chacham or the Pasuk of Sha'alavicha v'yagetcha zekeinecha v'yamrilach. So this is a source base for Mrs. Rabbanon. And indeed, the term v'tzivonu, Hashem, you have commanded us to listen to the Mrs. Rabbanon is indeed in place. The second bracha, Sha'asa nisan l'aviseinu, on account of the nais. And this bracha applies throughout all the eight days of Hanukkah since the nais was kol yoimi isei, was prevalent throughout all the days. Finally, the bracha of Shechiyonu, the Kimana Begonu Lazman Azeh, that only applies to the beginning to the Hazman and is only recited on the first day. Now, the Madlik, the one who actually lights near Hanukkah, he recites all the brachis. The Uroya, he omits the first bracha of Lahadik Ner Shel Hanukkah. Continues the Gemara, Mosif Rabbi Amram. So you tell us that a bracha is meant to be recited even regarding the Hanukkah, which is Mitzvah Rabbonah? Is that so? A mitzvah der Rabbanon requires a bracha. We have a b'risa, which seems to tell us otherwise. Hadmai, if one purchases a produce from an Amaretz, an unlearned fellow, and there's an uncertainty, a suffix, whether the Amaretz properly removed the Tumas and Meisters, so the Chachamim obligated one to be mafresh some Tumas and Meisters from this Dmai, it's called Dmai, Dmai, what is this? There's a suffix regarding its status. Nevertheless, says the Brisa, even prior to uh, removing the Tumas from Isis, prior to fulfilling the Chiv Darabonam, one can use this item for Erev Ma'arim boy, we can use it for the Erev Chatseris, for Erev Tchumen, or Mishtatim boy to make a sheet of my voice. So the Erev Chatseris was meant to join together all the dwellers of the courtyard and able carrying there, and they used some food for that. And the, the uh, Erev Tchumen was meant to allow one to walk past the, the uh, limit of 2,000 Amis by placing food at the end of the Tchum, the end of the 2,000 Amis, that allows them to go further. Shit of Mavoyz was meant to combine all the dwellers of the Mavoyz to allow carrying there. So this food may be used for these mitzvahs. Over and Baruch Hanalav, and if one eats the Mai, he, make, he makes a bracha beforehand, the bracha samaiti, or mezam nanalav, and if he eats it, so... He can make Berchas HaZimon. He can bench with the Zimon afterwards. Uma Afrishin Oisei Orum. And when he goes ahead to remove the Tumas and Maishas from the Dmai, he can do it even Orum when he's not dressed. Because he doesn't need to make a Bracha when he's being Mafresh on Dmai. U Ben he may do it even during Ben Hashmashas of Shabbos. It's different than ordinary Afrashat Tumas and Maishas, which is not allowed to be done during Ben Hashmashas. 
says the Gemara, Vi Amris, call me the Rabbanon by Bracha. If you propose that all Mrs. Rabban require Bracha, Hach in our case, Kikoy Aram, when he's undressed, Hechim Evarach, how's he going to make a Bracha? Lo Be'inon, don't we require one to be dressed? The Pasuk tells us, Vahoya Machanecha Kodesh, Veleka. One is meant to have his encampment, Kodesh instead of, of Kedusha. And as Rashi says, the Pasuk continues, eras davar. Even regarding davar, words, uttering words of Kedusha may only be said when there's no ever present. So he's not complying with this obligation of Ahoyim Ha'amnecha Kadosh. Evidently, he's not going to make a bracha when he does the afrosh of Tumas and Ma'is from Tumai. So we see that even, a chi, even though it's a chiv, but since a chiv medra bonon, no bracha is recited. So why by Ne'er Chanukah? Is a bracha said? Amr Abaye. Indeed, uh, certainly a bracha is said uh, by a mitzvah der Abbanan. Tumai is different. Vada'i did the rain by a bracha. Only a chiv der Abbanan, which is based on a vada'i, and a certainly it's a definite chiv, a definite mitzvah, like in a chanaka. There a bracha is said. However, Dumai, which is a suffolk, the Devreim, it's only a, a chiv on account of a suffolk, on account of uncertain, the chacham were uncertain whether this produce requires from a surmise, whether it's tevel or not, the obligated hafrasha, it's only a suffolk. Lo yibay bracha, this doesn't need a bracha. Says the more, is that so, that a suffolk doesn't require brachas? What about the second day Yomtev, which is a Suffolk the Devreim, who, Uboi Bracha, Chacham established Yomtev Sheni, for concern that we might not know what day of the month it is, so it's, it's a, it's a, um, we observe Yomtev Sheni, Allah Suffolk is based on uncertainty, nevertheless we make brachas, Rashi says we make Kiddush, just like the first day of Yomtev, says the more there it's different, Hasam, Kivan the Loyla Zuzuli Bey, Chacham were concerned, that if we don't treat Yom Tov Sheni with, in the same regard, if we don't make the brachis like Yom Tov Rishon, perhaps people will be mezalzal, they will, they will take Yom Tov Sheni lightly. They will not regard it, it, it with the same degree of respect as Yom Tov Rishon. They'll say, well, it's not Shabbos, it's just Yom Tov, it's not even Yom Tov Rishon, it's Yom Tov Sheni. They'll be mezalzal on it. And therefore the Chachamim established that the brachis on Yom Tov Sheni should be the same as Yom Tov Rishon. So according to Abayi, once again, only a valid Devreim, a a chiv der Abbanan, mitzvah Abbanan, which was established on account of a vade, definite mitzvah, like near Hanukkah, requires a bracha. However, Tumai, which is merely a suffolk, no bracha is recited. Therefore, he can be mafresh or undressed because no bracha is required. Yom Tov Sheni is different because the Chacham concerned about Zilzal. Rabba says, no, a bracha is always recited, even by a suffolk der Devreim, like Yom Tov Sheni. Why then does the Mai not require a bracha? Says Rava, Rava Amar, Roy Bami Aret Maasrahim. Roy, the majority of Am Aret do indeed separate Tumas and Mises properly. Therefore, Dumai is not really a suffix. It's not really a, a, a typical uncertainty. It's less than that. It, it's merely a stringency, a chumra. And therefore, a bracha is not applied by a frusher's Tumas and Mises or Dumai. So going to Rava, not only does a Vadai Drabanon like the Hanukkah require a bracha, even a Suffolk like Yom Sheni, Tumai is different because it's not even a Suffolk, it's merely a Chumra. Continues the Gemara, Amar Pun, Chatzar Sheyesh Toshnei Pesachim. So if there's a courtyard which contains a bais, which has two doorways out to the courtyard, Tzricha Shtei Neiris, it requires two Neiris Hanukkah, one for each doorway, explains Rashi, because we're concerned that people perhaps will think that in this bias live two families. It contains two households. It's split into two. And therefore it has two doorways. Therefore the Chacham required two neighbors, one for each doorway. And in this, in this, uh, in this manner, you're addressing the Chashad, the suspicion of the passerby. Continues the Gemara. Va'oma Rav. This is only provided if the two doorways are facing different directions. In that case, a person needs to place in their Hanukkah by each one of the doors. But if they're both facing in the same direction, only one in Hanukkah is required. So well, let's analyze this. My time. What is the reason for this? Why do we require 
two neighbors on both doorways on account of suspicion that the passerby will think that this bias really contains two households and therefore if he merely puts one near Hanukkah they're going to say okay what about the other family where's their near Hanukkah so it arouses suspicion and the people might question where why is the other family not lighting says Zagmar on account of whose chashad are we concerned chashad of the man whose chashad are we trying to address what type of people the chashad of passerby of Bnei Yishasaram that are coming, the Alma from, they're, they, they're not dwellers of this city. They came, they're visitors from a different city. And when they pass by this home, they'll say, well, there are two doorways, apparently there are two households. So apparently the, one of the families are not, are not light enough fulfilling the obligation. If so, says the Gemara, what difference does it make if the two doorways are facing the same direction or different directions? Even when they're facing the same direction, the same suspicion will be aroused. The person will say, well, the two doorways means the two households. Where, where is their menorah? So what difference does it make? Whether it's shtei ruch, it's ruch hachas. I chashad of the masa. If we're trying to address the chashad, the suspicion, of his fellow city inhabitants, says the mar afilu, mishtei ruch is nami loy In that case, even when there are two doorways facing different directions, there's no room for suspicion here. There's no chashad being aroused because the people who live in this town know that this bias only contains one household. And therefore, there's only one Er Hanukkah. So there's no need to address their chashad at all. Even if there are two doorways facing different directions, why is more than one there required? Everybody knows that this bias only contains one household. So either way, we can't figure out what is pshat in this, in this halacha. Certainly the chashad here is the suspicion of the Bnei Masa, his fellow city dwellers. So although they know that this bias only contains one family, one household, however, there's a chiv to place two neighbors, one by each doorway. Why? Because if the two doorways are facing different directions, we're concerned that the zimna the machlevi behai that the person will pass by one of the doorways. Sometimes he will pass by one and not the other. For like half bag, they'll pass by one and not pass by the other. And uh, they'll see that this doorway does not contain any Nech any Nech Hanukkah. And they'll conclude from there. But I mean, they'll say, you know what? Just like, has he, had, just like he hasn't lived near this doorway, on the other doorway, there's no minority present either. Therefore, this will arouse their chashad, the suspicion that this person has not fulfilled his mitzvah to be madik near Hanukkah. So once again, the concern is not that somebody will propose that there are many households living in this bias. Certainly not. We're, we're discussing the chashad of his fellow city dwellers who know that this bias only contains one household. Nevertheless, there's a chiv to be madik two neiris. In the case we are the two doorways face different directions. So if they're facing the same direction, there's no room for suspicion because the passerby will notice that there's a manure there. There's a manure placed near one of the doorways which is sufficient for the household contained in this bias. However, if the psachim are facing different directions and the passerby doesn't notice a manure near one of the doorways, he's not going to bother to go around and check the other one. He'll simply conclude and say, well, this family is not doing their mitzvahs in Hanukkah they have not lit any Ner Hanukkah near any of the doorways. Points out the Ran that certainly when he's going to be Madak the second Ner to place it by the second doorway, a bracha will not be said for that Hadlaka. Because this is not really an integral part of the original, of the, of the primary Hadchiv of Hadlaka and Hanukkah. It's merely coming to address Hashad and suspicion of passerby. Therefore, bracha is not, re- not recited for this Hadlaka. Continues the Gemara. What do we find a precedent for this concept that one is meant to conduct himself in a manner to address suspicion, to preempt Chashad? Says the more indeed, we found it in the price. The Sanya. Omer Pshimin. Bishvilah Vod Varim. On account of four reasons, Omer Torah, 
the Torah instructs the farmer to leave a portion, a corner of his field, to leave it at the end of his harvesting. He doesn't have the prerogative, the choice to leave it in the beginning, on the middle of his harvesting. The Torah says, You're not meant to conclude your ktsira. Before you finish your ktsira, leave a bit for the anim, only at the very end of your So why is that? Why does he have to leave it strictly at the end of his field? Says Rav Shimon, there are four reasons for this. Now we find that several times Rav Shimon expounds on the reasons for Allah has mentioned in the Torah. And here too, Rav Shimon will offer four reasons for this obligation. Number one, we play Gezel Aniyim. Number two, we play Bittel Aniyim. Number three, we play Achashad. And finally, Mishum Asachalim. As the model explain, number one, we play Gezel Aniyim on account of stealing from Daniyim. What does this mean? Shalayire. Balabayis Shopnil were concerned for the following scenario that the Balabayis, the farmer, will have perhaps a relative who is an Ani and he'll prefer giving the payah to him. So he's going to time it accordingly. We're concerned that he shouldn't see Shopnil at a time when there are no Ani present. This will be a good opportunity for him to turn to his relative, Yomel Kroyve Ani. Harezu Payah, take a look, this is payah here. I am designating this as payah. So to preempt this type of situation, the Torah obligated him to leave at a set point in the field, to leave it at, as the last portion of his field. This is a standard procedure which will preempt this type of conduct. The Anim will know what to expect, they'll anticipate the payah, they'll know it's, it's the last portion of the field, and therefore they'll have an equal chance at getting the payah. So that's the first reason, what is the second reason? On account of idling of the Anim. What does this mean? Shaloi Yanim Yoshim Misham, the Anim will not have to sit and wait and sit idle and, uh, to, and uh, observe the Baal Bayis and wait and see. Achshav Maniach Baal Bayis Pay. Take a look at now, he's leaving the pay. They won't, be, they won't have a, a set time for pay. They won't know when to expect to the pay. They'll have to sit here and idle, waste their time and see when the Baal Bayis is leaving his pay. Therefore, the Torah set a standard procedure. Leave it at the end of your field. So this is a, a something which they can anticipate and know and time their schedule accordingly. Continues going, what is the third reason? Ne'achshad, on account of suspicion. What does this mean? Because if he can choose to leave pay where he wants, so perhaps he'll have left the pay at the beginning or the middle of his field. Now when he gets to the end, the passerby will say, hey, where is this pay? Perhaps he has not really given pay so the pastor I should not say and suggest a curse should befall this person who has not left over pay for the anim. What is the fourth reason? On account of the Pasik, which tells us that he's meant to leave pay at the end. Don't conclude your harvesting, leave something at the end. Says more, this is a, an independent reason. What about the other reasons? Aren't they merely coming to explain? This Pasuk as well. Atu Kulu, are the other reasons suggested? Aren't they coming merely to expand and explain? This Pasuk Basachala. It's not a fourth reason. It forms the basis of the other explanations. Amar Rav, indeed, this is a fourth reason. What does Rav Shimon mean when he says that one is meant to leave P at the end because of Basachala? We're concerned about Ramayin, people who, who try to cheat and try to deprive the Anim of their due, of the payah which is, which is instructed, which is uh, contained in the words of Basachala, the Torah instructs one to leave payah, don't conclude your harvesting, there's a chi of payah. Now, if a person will be allowed to leave payah where he wants, he's so going to pretend that he left it already. Oh, I left my payah in the beginning or the middle. I don't need to leave payah at the end of my field. So he's coming to deprive the Anim of their share. He won't give payah altogether. Therefore, in order to prevent this situation, one is meant to leave payah strictly at the end of his field. This will ensure that nobody can deprive the anim of their dushir. Continues the Gemara, Omar of Yitzchak, back to Neres Hanukkah. Omar of Yitzchak, by Radif Omar Afuna. Ner, So if one has a lamp which was designed in a manner which has, has two places to place a wick, So two people can use the same ner. Each one will have his own wick and his own flame. Amar Rav, 
What about the following situation? Mile Karashem, and if one fills a bowl with oil, the Kifa Psilates, and he surrounds the rim with many wicks. So can many people use the same Kara? Each one will have his own wicklet. It depends. Kafa Le'akli, Sofi, covers it with a, a Kli, and by doing so he separates between the different wicks, different flames. Indeed, many people can use this Kli. Many people can light their Ner Hanukkah. Each one will have his own Psila, since they, 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 are, they are separated. They look like they're distinct, independent flames. However, But if he hadn't covered this bowl with a Kli, and he didn't properly separate the Psilis, the wicks, one from the other, in this case, all the flames seem to, to join together and form this, this large fire. Also came in Madura. And if so, Even for one person on his own, this is not suitable. Not only can many people use this for their Ner Hanukkah, but even one person who chooses to use this entire bowl for himself, it's not kosher for his Ner Hanukkah. Why? Says Rashi. Because it appears like a Madura, like a large fire. And for Hanukkah we need Ner Hanukkah, a flame. Therefore, this is not kosher. Now the Ram points out that if the psilis are adequately separated one from the other, if they're separated as shir v'erzba, in that case, it's enough separated and they look distinct. And therefore, it is kosher. It's not considered to be a madura and many people can use these psilis that is protruding from this bowl for their ner Hanukkah. So in summary, we learned several halachas regarding ner Hanukkah. Achsanoi, one who is a guest in another person's home, he also is chayev in Ner Hanukkah. We learned that Shemen Zayis, olive oil, is the most preferred to be used. It is Mina Mufchar. If one merely sees Ner Hanukkah, he makes a bracha. We learned that if one has two doorways facing different directions, he's meant to place two Ner Hanukkah, one for each doorway. Why? And finally, a Madura, a large flame, is puzzle for Neres Hanukkah. Continues the Gemara. Omar it is obvious to me what the halacha will be in the following case. Ner Beisayv in Hanukkah. If one has a choice to use his one Ner, he only has one Ner, and it's Shabbos, after, it's Friday afternoon, he has a choice, shall I use it for Ner Beisayv, this is the Ner Shabbos, or shall I use it for Ner Hanukkah? Ner Beisayv Adif. Certainly, the Ner Shabbos takes precedence. Why? Mishum Sholem Beisei. On account of Sholem Bais. Because the Ner Shabbos, it, it enhances the peace and harmony in the home because it, an illuminated home improves the overall mood and it prevents people from stumbling over unforeseen items. So therefore, Ner Beisei comes before Ner Hanukkah. What about the next choice? Ner Beisei B'Kiddush Hayoyim. If he has enough funds to buy either a candle for Ner Shabbos or to use it for wine for Kiddush. Here too, Ner Beisei Adif, then Ner Shabbos comes first. Why? For the same reason, Mishom Shalom Beisei. Now comes the question. Boy Rav. So he has enough for Ner Shabbos, but he has a little bit of funds left over to buy one of the following items. Ner Hanukkah, the Kiddush Hayoyim. He can either use it to buy Ner Hanukkah or wine for Kiddush. Mao, which way is he meant to go? Kiddush Hayyim Adif, does Kiddush come first because the Tadr, because it's something more frequent, it comes every week, and therefore it takes precedence over Ner Hanukkah. Or Dilma, perhaps, just the opposite, Ner Hanukkah Adif. Ner Hanukkah takes precedence, Mishum Persum Anissa, because Ner Hanukkah publicizes the names of Hashem. Basr di Bay Adir Pashta, after he had the question, he concluded as follows. Certainly Ner Hanukkah Adif, Mishum Persum Anissa. So he's meant to use his money for Ner Hanukkah because it contains this element of Persumanisa, it publicizes the names of Hanukkah, and therefore it takes precedence over Kiddush Hayyim. Ask the Rishayim, how can we say that Ner Hanukkah, which is merely a mitzvah der Abonam, takes precedence over Kiddush Hayyim, which is a chiv der Raisa? Say the Rishayim, the mitzvah of Kiddush, Minat Torah, is not specifically on wine, that is a chiv der Abonam. One could say Kiddush on bread, or perhaps even just recite the words of Kiddush. So the obligation to say Kiddush al Ayayin is a Chiv der Abadan. If so, it's equated, it's on the same level as Ner Hanukkah, they're both der Abadan. And as we conclude, Ner Hanukkah comes first because it has the added element of Presume Nisa.
Continues the Gemara. Amr Avuna. Haragubah Ner. One who is accustomed to lighting Ner Shabbos, Ner Hanukkah. He is Zoycha. Having lay Banam Tabit Chacham. He is Zoycha to children Tabit Chacham. Explains Rashi why. Because Ner Shabbos and Hanukkah are the Ner Mitzvah. Which produce the Torah Ur. As the Pasuk says, Ner Mitzvah. The Torah Ur. So he is Zoycha to children Tabit Chacham. Hazar be mezuzah, one who is meticulous regarding mitzvahs mezuzah, which is placed on a bias, so he's zeichel to a nar, to a nice home. Hazar be tzitzis, which is placed on a beged, zeichel to tell us nar, to a nice garment. Hazar be kiddush hayoyim, he's zeichel to have lots of wine. Zeichel be malay gabriyayin, to fill containers of wine. Continues the Gemara, Rav Huna have a ruggle. Rav Huna was accustomed to have a cholav v'tani apischa de Rav Avin, nagra. He would pass by the front of the home, in front of the doorway of the home of Rav Avin, the carpenter. Chaza, he noticed, that a ruggle but they were very elaborate in the fulfillment of the mitzvah of Ner Shabbos, Ner Hanukkah, they would, they would have lots of candles burning. Omar, he said, he exclaimed, as a result of this enhanced mitzvah performance, two great chachamim, will be produced from this home. And indeed, Nafka Minayu, Rav Yidi Ba'avin, Rav Chi Ba'avin. They produced two children, one was Rav Chi Ba'avin, one was Rav Adi Rav Yidi Ba'avin, there were two Tamit Chachamim, that were produced from, that were sons, of Rav Avin, the carpenter. Continues to Rav Chizda, have a ruggle, he was accustomed to passing by, the Bechal Vatani, a Pischa, the Vey Nasho, the Rav Shizvi, from the home, of the father-in-law of Rav Shizvi. Chazen, he noticed, have a ruggle with Shragetuva. They too were accustomed to lighting large amount of candles. So the first should speak out that in the first case, they, uh, they applied this, this elaborate procedure to both, to Neres Shabbos and Neres Hanukkah, so it was to two sons of Tamit HaKham. In this case, however, they, were, they increased their number of candles regarding one of the two mitzvahs, either, it was either Shabbos or Hanukkah. So, so uh, Rav Chizah said, Omar, as a result of this, of this uh, conduct, Gavar Rabba, Nafak Meach, a great man, will come from this home. And indeed, Nafak Minayu, Rav Shizvi, indeed, they produce a son in law, Rav Shizvi. Continues the Gemara, Dvisu, the Rav Yosef, Havam Achra, Umadak Slav. So the wife of Rav Yosef would, would delay her kindling of Neir Shabbos. The first would say she wanted it to be Nikar. Should be discernible that it is indeed the Lakav Shabbos, so she delayed very close to Shabbos. Omler of Yosef, of Yosef didn't want to demolish her directly. He 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 did it in a roundabout, delicate way. He presented her with a price. Tanya we learned a price. The pasuk says Lo Yomosh Amad An and Yaiman. So the pillar of of the cloud stayed with Kal Yisrael by day. Vamuda Eish Laila and the pillar of of fire stayed with them throughout the night. So Rashi says, why does the Pasuk need to repeat Lo Yomash Anon Yaimam? We already know from a different Pasuk that the, that the Anon led the way. Apparently the Pasuk is teaching us an added Chiddush here. Malame is coming to teach us. Shamud Anon Mashal Mamudesh. That the Amud Anon would join together with the, with the illumination of the Amudesh. Why? Because the Amud Aish, which was meant to serve at night, he wouldn't wait until nightfall to come along. He would proceed, he would come earlier. He would be mocked him. So at the end of the day, they were both joined together. The Amud HaAna and the Amud HaEish were both illuminating together. The Amud HaEish, Mashlam Amud Similarly regarding when the, when the pillar of, of uh, the Amud HaAna, the, the cloud came along at the beginning of the day. It didn't wait until the beginning of the day. It came a bit earlier at the end of the night. And the Amuda Eish would join forces together with the Amuda Anan that arrived early. And they would both provide illumination together. So we see from here that it is proper not to wait to the last moment. You meant to come earlier. Here too, he sent to a, a message. This was meant as a hint. You meant not to wait to the last moment. You should light your Nehru Shabbos a bit earlier. If so, Sarver Lagduma. If so, she figured, let me light it very early. Amala Osaba, the elder, told her, no. Tanina, we learned in the Brisa, Ubovad provided, Shloyagdim. He's not meant to light too early. But Shloyachar, nor too late. So we see here that just as one is not meant to delay lighting to the last moment, he's also not meant to light too early in the day, but rather to light near Shabbos in its prescribed proper moment. 
continues the Gemara, on my Rav, the Rachim Rabbanam, one who loves the Tamid Chachamim Rashi, says he loves them like a father loves his sons. Indeed, Havu Leib Din Rabbanam, he's Zeche, to have sons, Tamid Chachamim, who indeed he loves, like the love of his father to his sons. The Moiki Rabbanam, one who displays covered respect towards Tamid Chachamim, he will be zeicha to have son-in-law Hamid Chacham, and he himself will experience the covet of Torah in his household. The Tachum Rabbanu, one who fears Hamid Chacham, he has year towards them. What is this Har who gufe? Havetzum Rabbanu, he himself will develop into a Talmud Chacham. Why? Explains the Maral because Yira denotes nullification, bittel. It's bonding to the Talmud Chacham, and therefore, subsequently, he himself will develop into a Talmud Chacham. However, we love Baruch Hu, if he's not this type of person, he's not the person that pursues Torah study, so he himself can become a Talmud Chacham. So how will this schar manifest itself? As the Gemara, at least, Mishtam and Mile, His words will be accepted and heeded to, just like the words of a Talmud Chacham. Continues the Gemara. So the Mishnah listed this as one of the oils that are unsuitable to be lit for Shabbos. My Shemen Shreifa, what is this? Amar Rabbah Shemen Shal Truma Shenetma. It is the Shemen of Truma that became Tummy. V'amai Kerle Shemen Shreifa. Why do we call it in this way? Ho'yib Liz Shreifa Oymit, because it's destined to be burnt. There's a mitzvah to burn this. Ube Shabbos my time Eloi. So why can't we use this for Shabbos? It burns well. It maintains a steady flame. Metoich Shem Mitzvah of Levare, since it's a mitzvah, for him to burn this, or concerning Xeru, made Xeru Shemayata. Perhaps he'll want to hasten the burning process, which is a mitzvah. So go tilt and adjust the lamp. So, on concern of that, the Chachamim didn't allow him to use it for Shabbos. Amali Abayi Sabaye challenged Rabbah. Elamiyata, if so, that the Xeru, the concern is that he'll be Mata, he'll tilt the lamp, which is a Malacha on Shabbos. But on Yantif, this is not a Malacha. But Yantif Lishtri, if so, on Yantif, this should be allowed. He should be allowed to use the Shemen. Sreifa, in a ner, Allah metanan. If so, why did we learn the Mishnah? A madlik and Mishnah Sreifa be yamtiv. Says Rabba, Gzeir yamtiv at Shabbos because if you allow it on yamtiv, he might come to do it on Shabbos as well. Rav Chiz the Amano l'sham yata lechashiman. There's no concern that since it's a mitzvah for him to burn it, he's going to go ahead and hasten the burning process. There's no such concern. So why then does the Mishnah tell us that it's not suitable? Ella Hacha was speaking about Biyantif. Shechali is Erev Shabbos Askin. We're speaking about Yantif fell on Erev Shabbos. So why can't he burn this Shem and Sreifa on Yantif? Lefisha in Sreifa and Kachim Biyantif. Because one is not allowed to burn Kachim and Yantif. One is not allowed to burn Truman that became Tami and Yantif. We learned some Pasuk later on in the Gemara. So this is the Allah and Al Mishnah. There's no concern of Shemayat on Shabbos. It's a new concern. There's a new problem. Because he may not burn the Shem and Sreifa on Yantif. So he's speaking about burning on Yantav itself. Says Zimur, how could you say at the beginning of the Mishnah, it's discussing uh, Shem and Sreifa on Yantav. That's already discussed in the second part of the Mishnah. Since we find in the Sefer, it says, Apparently the first part of the Mishnah is not speaking about Yantav. So how can you say that the first part of the Mishnah is discussing Yantav? Says Zimur, no. The entire Mishnah is discussing Yantav. The Sefer is merely coming to explain the Rish. Amar Chanin Misur. The Sefer is telling us, Ma Tam Kamar. giving us the reason. Ma Tam Eimadlikim B'Shem Esreifa B'Yantav. What is the reason for the Allah mentioned in the Rish of the Mishnah? That we can't burn Shem Esreifa on Yantav. Lefi Shein Sreifa M'Kachim B'Yantav. Because one is not allowed to burn Kachim on Yantav itself. Continues in more Tani Kavasar of Chizda. We have a Bryce and support of Rav Chizda. The Bryce says, Kol Eilu Amru. All those materials that the Chachamim listed for us as being unsuitable to, to burn for Shabbos. On Yantav it's allowed because there's no concern that it'll go and tip and adjust the unsteady flame. Because on Yantav one is allowed to light a flame. Except for this one item of Shem and That is not allowed on Yantav because one is not allowed to burn on Yantav. So you see clearly from this b'risa that the item of Shem Esreifa is a reference to Yantif and not to Shabbos. So in summary, the Mishnah tells us we don't burn Shem Esreifa. What is it referring to? According to Rabbah, 
It's referring to having a nair, which contains Shema Shreifa, having it lit on Shabbos. One can't do that because since it's a mitzvah, there's a concern of Shema Yat. You can't burn on Yom Tov either because of Xer Yom Tov Atu Shabbos, Chodr of Chizda. One may have this lamp burning on Shabbos itself. It's only on Yom Tov that he may not burn the Shema Shreifa because of the halacha of Ein Seifin Kach Yom Tov. Perhaps let's take a quick summary of today's blot. We began with several halachis concerning Neris Hanukkah. The Gemara told us about an achsenoi, a guest in one's home. He is chayiv in Neris Hanukkah. The Gemara told us that Shemen Zayis is the most preferred oil. If one merely sees Neris Hanukkah, he makes a bracha. What types of brachas do we make on Neris Hanukkah? So there are three brachas. And uh, the first one is Asher Kachanam, it's says, Son Allah Hadlik. How can we use the term Vitzivano? Where did Hashem command us on our Hanukkah, which is the Rabbanon? Says the Gemara either from the Pasuk of Eloi Saucer or the Pasuk of Sha'al Avi Chavi Agetcha, Zikanecha Viyarmilach, which forms the basis of the Mitzvah to the Rabbanon. The Torah tells us to listen to the Rabbanon. We add another bracha of Sha'al Sanisan Avisenu. The Gemara tells us this is recited all throughout Hanukkah because of the nays that took place throughout Hanukkah. And we say Shechayanu, but this is only on the first day on account of having reached the beginning, the Tchilas Hazman. The Madlik, the one who lights the Ner Hanukkah, makes all three brachas. The Uroya, he only makes the second and the third, he doesn't make. Lahadik Ner, Shal Hanukkah. The Gemara proceeded with other halachas of Ner Hanukkah. If one has uh, two doorways facing different directions, he places two menorahs, with Neachshad, a Madura, something which is a large fire, it does not constitute Ner, and therefore it's puzzle for Hanukkah. The Gemara gave us a hierarchy, a list. Ner Shabbos comes first because of Shalom Bayis. Then comes Ner Hanukkah because of Pursum and Isa. And finally, Kiddush Hayyim as the third item on the list. The Gemara proceeded with several stories where there was Zeicha to the Tamid Chacham on account of them being meticulous and lighting an elaborate amount of, of candles in honor of the mitzvah. The Gemara told us if one loves Tamid Chacham, he will have children Tamid Chacham. If one has covet for Tamid Chacham, he will have son of Tamid Chacham. If one has fear, he himself will become a Tamid Chacham. The Gemara concluded with the Allah of Shaman Shreifa. Shaman Shreifa is the Shaman Truma that became Tameh. We have a difference of opinion here. According to Rabbah, there is an Issa to have it lit on Shabbos because of Shaman Yata. This on Yantub is merely Xerah unto Shabbos, according to Rav Chizda. On Shabbos is not a problem, there's no Shaman Yata here. On Yantub, there's a problem, there's an Issa having the Shaman Shreifa burning because of the Halacha of Ein Soifim Kachim Biyantub.